I introduced myself last time, but I'll <coughs> just like to show you this picture. This is uh, me sitting here doing my PhD study in Vietnam, uh, in the highlands of Vietnam towards the border of China. And I'm talking to people from these ethnic minority villages about water sanitation and hygiene programs. And this is a village health worker. And he's been put in charge for this uh, water and sanitation and hygiene program by the government. And the government has told him that now he's responsible to change uh, people's behaviors and improve the, the sanitation conditions. And uh, I, I interviewed this guy about wh what it's like to have this job and what kind of challenges he's meeting. And this poor guy was so frustrated. You know, he's, uh, he doesn't have any education. He was given a three months uh, crash course in health by the government, and now he's the health expert of the village. Um, and he only has this health knowledge. He doesn't have any other tools, like he doesn't know what to do when people don't want the latrine they get from the government. Or he doesn't know how to explain to people why they need to wash their hands. And they say, well, I'm lazy, or, or well, I don't have soap, or I'm not really dirty, I just came from my fields, there's no, I can touch uh, pieces, so why should I wash my hands? He has no idea how to convince people uh, to change their behavior. So it was interesting to hear, and I learned a lot from him on how not to design these uh, water and sanitation uh, programs. So I'm going to discuss that with you today. Uh, we're going to have three kind of uh, session. First, something about the social cultural drivers. Uh, and we're going to uh, learn something about the different approaches you can take to hygiene promotion. If you want to change people's uh, sanitation or water and hygiene uh, behaviors. But first, I, when I ask people about why do they behave like this, I think there was also a mentioning of you know, different degrees of hygiene in different cultures. So p often I hear, well, it's just their culture, they say. That's the culture in that place. That's why they don't behave like that. And when we use the word culture, uh, what is the culture? What is the hygiene culture here? We, we need to understand something about this concept of culture. It's kind of like a big black box. Eh? But there are two layers of <coughs> culture. You can say there are these uh, aspects of or, yeah, aspects of culture that you cannot serve those things that are the, the top, the tip of the iceberg. Right? When you arrive to a new place, you can certainly tell, I'm in a different place now and I'm a different culture because they are eating different things, they are dressing in a different way, they are organized in a different ways, uh, they speak a different language, and so on. But there are much, much more things under the surface here that's also part of people's cultures. And these are the things that are often guiding our, these are the things that are guiding our behaviors. So these are the things that you need to understand in order to find out why are they behaving like this. Do they have some beliefs? Do they have some value systems? Do they have some assumptions about, for example, disease? I'm not getting dirt, I'm not getting sick from this type of dirt or uh, they have some habits, maybe I'm very busy around 12, I need to run to the canteen to get before the others. Uh, and these things are creating hygiene and, and sanitation behaviors. And these things are, of course, incredibly difficult to get access to. Like, you can't see them. So you need to think hard and you need to ask people and you need to observe for some time in order to understand what's going on here. How do people think about this? disease, or why do they behave like this? Um, there are other social, cultural, and economic aspects that you can, uh, these categories that you can think of if you want to evaluate or understand a certain culture. So you can think about these things in a certain setting. How is it organized? Are there different are these things, how are they put in place in, this, in, this, in the site? I'm going to do my uh, sanitation intervention. And if you have, if you check all these things, you're already well informed about a lot of the social cultural aspects in your setting. What do you think are some of these things that are very important in your setting for how people have uh, organized their sanitation, for example? Or what, what kind of things are <coughs> creating hygiene beha certain hygiene behavior? So I can give you an example. For example, um, cast, the top one, right? 
So in India, the, there is a caste system. <coughs> and uh, per definition, it's actually abandoned. Because the government doesn't want that people have this uh, traditional way of classifying people in different social st strata. Right? But they're still there. And it will take quite a lot of generations to get rid of a caste system. So um, if uh, I entered one uh, southern, uh, southern Indian village, and I looked at the water system, and I saw there were different taps around the village, and I really asked many times, so thi who is this tap, who is it for? And they said, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Everybody can take water here, every parts of the village. And then I read it for some days, and I was around when they opened the water, and they, I saw them putting up the, the pump. And suddenly I realized it's only the caste that's living in this part of the town who's allowed to touch that water. But nobody would tell me, because the caste system doesn't exist. Right? And they know they're not supposed to talk about caste much. But it really does uh, create some very important water patterns in this village that you need to know of before you go in and decide something new. Um, 